Welcome to Wines Du Jour. We're going to have a great time here in Las Vegas tonight. We're at the Bonefish Grill. Well, that's got to tell you, fish and seafood are their big thing, but they also have a menu with lots of other things. In fact, one of the three items that we're going to taste tonight with our wines is a filet mignon. That's not fish. We've got wines coming to us from New Zealand, a beautiful Pinot Grigio, a Sauvignon Blanc, and one of the other wines that they're known for down there, Pinot Noir. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after these messages here on Wines Du Jour. And thanks for watching. Welcome to Wines Du Jour. Well, we are happy to be at a new place called Bonefish Grill. Now, if you don't know about Bonefish Grill and you're in Las Vegas, you want to make sure you come on over here to the southern part of Las Vegas Boulevard and enjoy this brand new freestanding restaurant that is just knocking them dead when it comes to quality food. They feature fresh fish and seafood, but they also have all kinds of things. In fact, they have steaks and chops and so on as, as well. And then tonight, to go along with this restaurant and some of its food, we've chosen a wine to come to us all the way from our favorite area out of the country called New Zealand. And as you may or may not know, about 15 years ago, New Zealand started importing wines into the United States. One of the first wines that they imported was a Sauvignon Blanc. And it just blew everybody away because the taste and flavor was so much different than the typical Sauvignon Blanc that we were used to, either from uh, France or somewhere in America. Well, since then, they've really improved not only the quality of the wines, they still have that unique taste, but they've also added something because the terroir is so good in that particular area south of the equator in New Zealand, and that is Pinot Noir. And so tonight, we're going to taste three wines from Kim Crawford Winery, beautiful winery in New Zealand. We're going to taste their Pinot Grigio, and of course that's a very uh, uh, Italian name, but Pinot Grigio is a very nice uh, varietal, and we're going to have a little uh, uh, sushi to go along with that tonight. Uh, wine number two is Sauvignon Blanc, and Kim Crawford has really improved the taste of uh, the Sauvignon Blanc coming out of New Zealand. It's very, very nice. And we have uh, Hamilton Gilberg with us this evening. He's going to explain to you a little bit later in the program uh, about some of these wines coming from there. And, of course, our third wine, as I mentioned before, is a Pinot Noir. Now, Pinot Noir, as you may or may not know, is without a doubt the most difficult grape to grow to make wine out of. It's T tough no matter where it is, anywhere in the world. So what you have to do is find out what kind of soil condition and what we call terroir uh, before you plant a Pinot Noir in order for it to come out. One of the beautiful things about the terroir in New Zealand is that Pinot Noir loves it, it comes out wonderful, and the, the wines are absolutely beautiful. So those three wines, uh, a little bit of food, from Bonefish Grill. I don't know what else to tell you. This is a great location. We've got guests coming for our radio show a little bit later. I want to thank you for watching us here on Wines Du Jour, and we'll be back right after these messages. Switch to DirecTV today and get a free upgrade to the all-new Genie, our most advanced HD DVR ever. Genie serves your entire home with just one receiver, allows you to record any five shows at once, and gives you up to three times more HD recording capacity than cable. Order now and lock in your savings for two years. Other packages start at just $29.99 a month. So get all your TV wishes granted. Switch to DirecTV and get your free upgrade to Genie today. Welcome back to Wines of Jour. Thanks for watching. My special guest this evening is somebody that I've known for several years here in the Las Vegas area. I have to tell you, he's very knowledgeable about wine. He represents Kim Crawford wines that we're uh, going to feature tonight on Wines of Jour. And uh, I'm going to introduce him to you. His name, I already told you, I think. 
uh, Hamilton Gilbert. Uh, Hamilton is a, a friend and a knowledgeable associate in the wine industry. He's very familiar with Kim Crawford wine since he represents him here uh, in the Las Vegas area. And first of all, uh, Hamilton, thank you very much for joining us this evening and giving us an opportunity to taste some of uh, Kim Crawford's wine. Yeah, my pleasure, Les. Good to, uh, good to be back. Let's talk first about the, the Pinot Grigio. Now, we know Pinot Grigio probably originated in Italy. It's one of the favorite white wines of Italy, and for people all across the country, they love Pinot Grigio when they go to an Italian restaurant with Italian food. Well, but We're not the, talking Italian the, right the now. The history of Pinot Grigio actually starts in France. Okay. And it's known as Pinot Gris, G-R-I-S is how they spell it. Uh -huh. uh, that's actually really the origination of it. Uh, but it's huge in Italy, uh, very well known throughout the world now. But they're making great Pinot Gris or Pinot Grigio. It's really the same grape, they just call it something different. It's spelled different depending on what part of the world it comes from. That's right. right. Yeah, well, and, and what marketing team you have. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they're doing a great job. And Kim Crawford is doing fantastic with it because New Zealand lends itself to making great Pinot Grigio. It's got a nice cool climate. Pinot Grigio is a high acid wine. It needs cool climate. It needs difficult to grow soils. Uh, and that's really what Marlboro has perfect for it. Right. Marlboro, New Zealand. You might want to remember that. It's not the cigarette company. It's uh, a, the largest town in one of the best wine areas uh, in New Zealand. Let me pour a little bit of this while we're talking about this Pinot Grigio. Now, I have to say, I, I checked on this uh, before the show, and the alcohol content here is 13.5, which I happen to think is probably perfect uh, for wine when it comes to pairing with food. The higher the wine, the higher the alcohol content, the tougher it is to pair with food, in case you didn't know that. So if you get around 15 or 16 percent uh, in terms of uh, wine uh, alcohol, uh, you may have a problem doing that. You know, alcohol lends itself a lot to, to acidity too. It has, has a good balance with the acidity. So when you have high alcohol, what, what you really want with that is kind of rich, fatty, fleshy things that go great with that high alcohol. With something right. like this, where we have kind of a medium alcohol, but still bright acidity, it, it, it balances better with clean, fresh flavors. True. And of course, we're here at uh, Bonefish Grill. Uh, and the chef said, you know what's going to go good with that Pinot Grigio that we have on our appetizer menu? I said, what's that? He said, it's called ahi tuna sashimi. Here it is, ahi tuna sashimi. I have to tell you, I can't wait to dig in. In fact, I'm going to sit it over here in Hamilton. I can taste it. Yeah, you better share. Uh, uh, you bet, along with uh, some of this wine. But let's, let's talk a little bit more about the, the taste and flavor of Pinot Grigio. What, what do you normally expect when you uh, swirl your wine and stick your nose down in the glass of Pinot Grigio. What are some of the aromas that you might automatically expect to, to smell? A classic Pinot Grigio, you're going to get a lot of white floral notes. So, you know, clean, fresh white floral. Uh, Boy. And, and it varies greatly depending on where it's from. Anywhere from, you know, green apple and kind of that, that sour flavors to rich, sweet pear. Right. Uh, but along those white fruits. Peaches, creamy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a little less, less than creamy because uh, Pinot Grigio typically doesn't have any oak. They right. don't do any oak aging. They don't do any malolactic, which is a secondary fermentation. Uh, so it tends to be very crisp, very clean. Uh, not, not often do you see a lot of really creamy flavors. Right. Well, uh, I have to tell you, what kind of a retail price is, would we expect to pay in, in any retail store around? Not on sale and so on, but just a, a normal price. I'd say around uh, 10 to $12 for ah, this wine. Very good. Yeah. Kim, you're doing a beautiful job, lady. Don't, uh, don't quit. This is really tasty stuff. Now let's try a little bit of this sashimi because uh, they have uh, uh, some little ingredients to go along with it, uh, but I just want to taste it straight away. How about you? Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna just take one piece here. Mm. Very nice. Beautiful. Sesame seeds, both white and black around the outside of it. The tuna is just barely warm, but not, uh, not cooked. Uh, so that makes it uh, sashimi, and I have to tell you the taste is good, and I can't wait to pair it with this wine. And they did a good job with this. There's mm. some good accoutrement on this plate. There's some wasabi and ginger, and both of those would probably pair really well with this. So on the next bite, I definitely want to give that a shot. Uh, well, that the acidity in this uh, Pinot Grigio uh, holds up to uh, oh. the heat of the wasabi and the, the unique taste of ginger. Yeah, so absolutely. all of these things go together. So if you come to Bonefish Grill, check it out. Try uh, this ahi tuna sashimi along with a nice glass of 
of a Pinot Grigio. Not a bad thing, a very, very good thing. How long have they been making wine uh, in New Zealand as far as uh, Kim Crawford is concerned? Well, Kim Crawford, Kim is actually, Kim's a gentleman, and he and his oh. wife started making wine 99, and then 2003 was their first real export vintage. Oh, okay. And they sent Sauvignon Blanc to the States, uh, and it got rave reviews, uh, Wine Spectator Top 100, wow. and they've really been doing it since then. Now, <laughs> Kim has since left, uh, uh, left the main winemaking section. So there's a gentleman, uh, the new winemaker's name's Anthony Walkenhorst, and he's doing a great job. He's really continued with the, the philosophy that Kim passed on to him, which uh -huh. is clean, crisp wines, you know, focus on the terroir. They do all natural, or all uh, stainless steel or cement tank aging, so there's no oak on any of these wines. Right. So they're very, Straight away. very clean. Yeah, and, and you know what? That means it goes better with food, actually, in, in some cases. You know, we talk periodically here on Wines Du Jour about uh, Chardonnay not being the most perfect wine to go with food. Uh, and, and a lot of times it's because of the uh, oak aging that they have. And uh, they don't have any of that with any of the Ken Crawford wine. So we know that the Pinot Grigio is good. Next coming up is Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, in fact, we've got to go to a break. So if you'll hang in there, we'll be back after the break and we're going to talk a little bit more with Kim, about Kim Crawford's wines here at uh, this particular restaurant and also Hamilton Gilbert is my guest. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after these messages. Switch to DirecTV today and get a free upgrade to the all new Genie, our most advanced HD DVR ever. Genie serves your entire home with just one receiver, allows you to record any five shows at once, and gives you up to three times more HD recording capacity than cable. Order now and lock in your savings for two years. Other packages start at just $29.99 a month. So get all your TV wishes granted. Switch to DirecTV and get your free upgrade to Genie today. Welcome back to Wines Azure. We're having a great time here at Bonefish Grill. In fact, speaking of Bonefish Grill, I'd like to take a few minutes and introduce you to not only the general manager, his name is Craig Leadham, but also the executive chef, and we're talking about Marcus Powers. They're sitting right next to me, and I have to tell you, I'm going to have them give us some information about Bonefish Grill, and I'm going to start out with Craig. Tell us a little bit about Bonefish Grill, uh, the fact that they're a chain, where they're located, and how they ended up here in Las Vegas. Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you so much for letting us be a part of this show, Les. We're oh, man. We re really that. happy to be we on here. We love this place. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. And we're really happy to be a part of Las Vegas. Uh, Bonefish Grill originates out of Florida. It's got a Florida theme to it. And, uh, you know, we would spent a long venture getting out to Las Vegas. We're really happy to be here. There's uh, 180 locations nationwide for wow. Bonefish Grill. And, uh, you know, this is our uh, beginning of our expansion here in the West. We're opening in California at the end of the year, and and uh, really, really happy to be a part of the community here in Las Vegas right now. That's pretty good. Well, our second wine today is a Sauvignon Blanc, which is, of course, a white wine, in case you don't already know it. It's one of my favorite white wines to go with food. I think it's more food-oriented than almost any other white wine, especially uh, Chardonnay. That's not my favorite wine to go with food. but. Uh, this Sauvignon Blanc from Kim Crawford is pretty good. I'm going to pour some for us, and then I'm going to talk a little bit to uh, the executive chef here. And the fact is, he's been around for a while. He helped open up this restaurant, and I have to tell you, he does a beautiful job with the food, and everybody in the kitchen really knows what they're doing. The food that he has paired with this Kim Crawford Sauvignon Blanc is called Mussels Josephine. Here it is right here. I'm going to bring it over and we'll all get a chance to taste it. But Marcus, tell us a little bit about uh, how the name uh, Muscles Josephine came about. Well, Muscles Josephine, uh, the founder, Tim Kersey, was very passionate about the food and the restaurant that he had started. And he wanted to have a personal attachment to it. So he named it after one of his daughters. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so Josephine is one of his daughters. Well, fact, uh, the fact that the chain actually originated in Florida, and there's several of them down there, Fish and seafood is uh, one of the main items, and that's where the name Bonefish Grill came off. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. That's pretty cool. Now, how long have you been in the food business? I've been in the food business for about 14 years. Have you really? Yes. I went to culinary school and uh, did my externship out in Paris, France. All right. I also uh, got my hotel restaurant management degree at NAU. Uh, so I've worked in the industry for a while, and I've been with Bonefish Grill for about seven years now. 
Well, I think you picked a good one to hang in there oh, with. Oh, yes, yes. So do you go to the new uh, restaurants and open them up, or are you going to be here permanently? I'm here permanently. Uh, I have a pretty special relationship with Bonefish Grill in Las Vegas because, unfortunately, we had a restaurant previous to this one that was in Henderson. Fortunately, it closed down. But the fact that I was able to work at that restaurant and bring this name back to the company along with Craig and the rest of the management team, it feels really good and it makes me feel really special. That's good. Well, we're glad to have you back. I can say Thank that. You. Your location is beautiful. They built the building here, folks. This is a freestanding restaurant uh, in a shopping mall, if you will. It has its own parking lot. It's a great place to visit. So when you come to Las Vegas, check out Bonefish Grill on the south end of the Strip. Easy to find. Anybody can tell you where it is or taxi can bring you over here. If you live in Las Vegas, you have to know that it's right off of 215. Not hard to find, and that food is very good. You're open seven days a week? Yes. yes we are. Lunch and dinner, or how does that work? We open up at 4 o'clock, four o'clock. Uh, Monday through Friday, and then Saturday we open up at 12 o'clock. We found that being that there's a lot of traffic here in the, in the shopping center, it's been some great business for us. And then we have a fantastic brunch on Sundays. We open at 11 a.m. on Sundays. We serve brunch from 11 to 2. Pairs well with all, all of the great wines that we have here as well. All right, and you've got a very nice wine list. They also have a good selection of beers. If you'd rather have beer than wine, that's okay too. There's nothing wrong with that. I just have to tell you, this is a place you need to know. Let's talk a little bit more now about Kim Crawford Sauvignon Blanc. The beautiful part about this is it has all those tropical notes, a typical mm -hmm. thing for Sauvignon Blanc. And, you know, coming from New Zealand, it has its own uniqueness to it. And I can tell you that sommeliers in particular, or people that are really into wine, you could put three or four glasses of Sauvignon Blanc from different parts of the world, and they can pick out the one from New Zealand right off the bat. Yes, you agree yes. with that? Oh, yes. Yeah. I um, mean, it has its own uniqueness. So if you've never tried New Zealand wines, you need to do it. And of course, if you're going to do that, go to your local retail wine store and look for some Kim Crawford. It's a beautiful name beautiful wines and Kim does a beautiful job I thought Kim was a lady it turns out to be the husband yeah. <laughs> but but that's okay Kim is Kim and Kim uh, it has got some very nice wines and this is also uh, I think I'm gonna ask Hamilton when he comes back uh, if if I'm not mistaken this is about the same price range as the Pinot Grigio but we'll find out more about that we've got to go to a break uh, when we come back we're going to talk about wine number three, which is a beautiful Pinot Noir from New Zealand. We're going to have some of these uh, Josephine mussels here uh, in just a moment. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back all around the world on Wines Du Jour. Thanks for watching. Switch to DirecTV today and get a free upgrade to the all-new Genie, our most advanced HD DVR ever. Genie serves your entire home with just one receiver, allows you to record any five shows at once, and gives you up to three times more HD recording capacity than cable. Order now and lock in your savings for two years. Other packages start at just $29.99 a month. So get all your TV wishes granted. Switch to DirecTV and get your free upgrade to Genie today. Welcome back to Wines Azure. We've got Hamilton Gilbert back with us now, and we'll talk a little bit about wine number three and a little bit of food that's going along with wine number three. Wine number three is the Kim Crawford Pinot Noir. And if you would, Hamilton, tell us a little bit about this Pinot Noir because it has its own unique taste coming from New Zealand, but it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Typical of the wines coming from New Zealand, it's got good minerality and good acidity, uh, and that's really what they're known for. Right. You know, that's what Marwa produces. Great minerality, great acidity, and that's what you're looking for in these wines. That's true. Okay, I was just going to say, this has such a, what we would call in the wine business, a crimson color or crimson note. It's a beautiful red color. And one of the unique parts here is this is 2011. And if you look at the outside rim on this, you won't see a little orange ring. And that is a telltale for uh, people that are in the wine business. Uh, if the wine has some age on it. But because this is 2011 instead of older, uh, it doesn't have that ring. So that's a way to tell uh, red wine when you're looking in the glasses. If it has an orange ring, there's probably some age on it. It makes no difference what the varietal is. Yeah, that's a good general rule. I mean, yeah. it obviously varies from depending on how they make it. But uh, one great, one interesting thing about vintages in New Zealand is because it's in the Southern Hemisphere, 
there right now here in America, we're just getting ready to harvest all our grapes. That's right. Uh, but down there, You're vines are, are dormant. Yeah. They've done That's everything. Right. Vines, they've pruned it. It's, it looks like a barren wasteland. Yeah, this is pretty much winter down there. That's right. By comparison. So that's kind of a unique thing. Now, the chef has gone to a lot of trouble uh, to pair a little bit with Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir, of course, is a red wine, and generally red wines come up with a red meat and, and, and things of that nature. He's taken some filet mignon, and he's cooked it to where it's rare, and sliced it. But here's the key. He's taken what he calls saucy shrimp sauce and put over the top of it. Now, what the heck is saucy shrimp sauce? Well, it's a Bonefish Grill original. It's really unique, and boy, is it tasty. There's nothing better than having a little shrimp sauce on top of a filet mignon. It's That's a not a bad thing. Isn't that good? Yeah, well, good old-fashioned serpent. <laughs> Let's try it. Let's try it. What do you think? Now, uh, this has a little tomato-lime uh, combination. It has some Kalmata olives uh, uh, along with the shrimp. And that, along with uh, the steak, I think, is going to be really good. What do you think? Very good? Yeah, it's beautiful. Steak's nice and tender. Mm. Mm. It's a great sauce, yeah. Wow, no it's... wonder it's popular. You know, and, and I love that he put olives in here. Olives are one of those things that are very difficult to pair sometimes. Yeah. Because of the briny characteristic. But there's a natural briny note to actually this Pinot Noir. It's got a light salty flavor to it. And it comes out and matches beautifully with, with uh, this dish. Excuse me, let me take a little sip of water here. Well, while you're doing that sip of water, I want to talk about one thing that's very important to New Zealand wine, which is the Stelvin Enclosure. Okay? Uh, New Zealand is famous for their sustainability practices. Kim Crawford's no different, and they work very hard. And one of the things that they're doing for the wine world is using no cork. Now, a lot of people think that this is actually a cheap or a less expensive way to do it. It actually costs more money to put the Stelvin enclosure on top. It really does. But it's better for the environment. It's better for for the world, as a, the wine world as a whole, because cork is actually at a shortage. Cork is harvested from a specific tree. Well, anybody that's been around wine for any length of time knows that you pull a cork on different bottles of wine, it's yep. a different kind of cork. Yeah, absolutely. Some of it is together with glue, some of it is solid, some of it is partially solid. That's right. It's just amazing. The one thing about a Stelvin closure, which incidentally is the the, the smart man's name for screw cap, <laughs> uh, but for Stelvin closures, uh, they have found that by leaving the cap on or taking it off, pouring a glass, putting the cap back on and letting it sit for two or three days, uh, two or three weeks, two or three months, even two or three years, the wine hangs in there. You pull a cork and nothing happens. You put the cork back in, you got the same kind of a problem. Yeah, you know, there's actually a lot of problems associated with cork. One of the other interesting things about Stelvin Enclosure is that it doesn't allow air in, and right. cork does. Now, wine is a living, breathing thing, you know, it changes as, as time goes on, and as wine aerates, it changes drastically. Well, one great thing about this is these crisp, clean wines stay crisp and clean for years to come because they don't have the oxygenation. That's, that's, that's a very good point. Uh, Stelvin closure is not a bad word. A uh, screw cap is not a bad word. That's it's right. just professionals just refer to it as a Stelvin closure as opposed to screw cap. It's the very same thing. Pinot Noir, as I mentioned earlier in the program, is a little tough to grow, but they have found some terroir or good soil conditions that Pinot likes in New Zealand, and they've come up with some outstanding wines. That's right. Two main wines coming out of New Zealand that are the most popular by far, one of them is Pinot Noir, the other one would be a Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, that doesn't mean Pinot Grigio is not very popular, because it certainly is. But those wines coming from New Zealand have their own unique taste. And if you haven't tried New Zealand wines, please do. Absolutely. It's very, very important. Don't yes, you agree? Absolutely. Okay. Well, we've almost run out of time. <laughs> we've had a great time here at Bonefish Grill in Las Vegas, Nevada, right on the strip in the south end. It has their own parking lot, a freestanding builder. You can't do any better than that. And the wines that we featured tonight, uh, thanks to Hamilton Gilbert, is Kim Crawford Wines out of New Zealand. All three of them were outstanding, and the chef did a beautiful job in pairing all of those together. So all I can say is, I'm hoping that you watch the entire show. Uh, and we want to thank you very much for doing that. And we'll be back next time, right here on Wine Du Jour.
The Asian TV, the community channel for Asian Americans in Las Vegas.